Hi everyone, Cooper Kid here. I use they, he pronouns, and I love making videos about a variety of topics. Today I want to tackle one of the most frequently asked questions I get, which is, why do you still care about COVID? To put it simply, it's an equity issue. I live by my values, and part of that means taking actions that reflect my commitment to health and safety during this ongoing pandemic. Yes, you heard that right. The pandemic is not over, despite what you may think. And COVID-19 is not just like the flu. So, let's talk numbers. According to wastewater data, the last reliable metric we have, the current estimates for August 2nd, 2024 in the U.S. show about 852,000 new cases per day. That's 1 in 56 people currently infectious with daily new long COVID cases ranging from 43,000 to 170,000. This data comes from the Pandemic Mitigation Collective at Tulane University, so we know that it's legit. Compare that to Dr. Fauci's benchmark of returning to normal when cases drop below 10,000 per day. Clearly, we are not there yet. Given these numbers, I won't be returning to a pre-2020 normal anytime soon. I'll keep masking, testing regularly, avoiding indoor dining, cleaning the air, and layering my COVID-19 precautions. Thinking of it like dressing for 20 degree weather. You need more than just a t-shirt. Another reason I take COVID-19 seriously is the unknown long-term risk. Would you drive without a seatbelt or spend a day in the sun without sunscreen? I wouldn't. Beyond long COVID, which I will get to in a second, we're seeing increased risk of gastrointestinal issues, heart problems, and even cancer post having COVID. And long COVID is far from rare. In fact, the CDC estimates that up to 35% of COVID survivors experience long-term symptoms like brain fog, fatigue, and rapid heartbeat. These are some serious issues that can lead to disability. And as, and as someone who is already disabled, I'm committed to minimizing my risk. And even if you are able-bodied, these are not health issues to be taken lightly. Living with any of these conditions can be very serious, not to mention costly, time-consuming, and exhausting. The healthcare system is not easy to navigate as a disabled person, and if you do not have to experience this, believe me, you do not want to. And my final point is about equity. If you are a person with privilege, you should be at the very least wearing a high quality mask, such as an N95 or KN95 mask. I have a whole podcast on COVID-19 and white supremacy, which I believe is worth a listen. The general gist though, is that COVID-19 disproportionately impacts marginalized communities more than privileged ones, and taking COVID-19 seriously through actions such as wearing a mask is a way to make equity a verb instead of just another failed DEI initiative. Moreover, when white people learned that they were not as impacted by COVID-19, many stopped masking. This says a lot about equity and perceived worth of others. People who are immunocompromised and or disabled are impacted by COVID-19 to a greater degree than able-bodied people can imagine. For some, getting COVID is a death sentence. And if you are not taking precautions to prevent the spread of COVID, that is on you. Wear a mask anywhere you think disabled people should be able to exist and thrive, which, spoiler alert, is everywhere. So that's why I still care about COVID-19. And this barely scratches the surface but I hope it sparks some thought and action. Thank you for watching, and I hope you stay safe out there. Goodbye.